For today's watch review, we're talking about the Casio ProTrek PRW2500T, the T standing for titanium. Now, it's easy to get overwhelmed when doing a review like this, just because a watch like this has so many functions and features to cover. So I'm gonna do my best to cover everything. So let's get started. For price, we're looking at an MSRP of $440. However, realistically on the street, you're looking at around $250 to $260 before taxes. And doing that quick 360 just so you can see what we're working with here. Here's the front or the main display. Here's the side. Quick view of that case back. And then here's the clasp. And the other side. And there you go. Starting off with the diameter, I took two different measurements. Number one from the widest point, so from the sensor to four o'clock, we get a measurement of around 53.7 millimeters. From nine to three, it goes down to 50.5 millimeters. For the case height, that comes in at 15.3 millimeters and then a lug to lug of 56 millimeters and then a band width of 22 millimeters. For weight, it's fantastic with that titanium bracelet. It comes in at 106 grams or three and five eighth ounces. So it's a really good everyday watch to wear. And here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. For functions and features, starting off the PRW2500 comes with the module number 3258. So what that means, at least for me, is that you're getting a solar charging watch with atomic timekeeping. So it's going to get powered by the sun and every day, as long as it's receiving a signal, it's going to update its time. So pretty much you're always going to have the most accurate timekeeping that you're going to get from any kind of watch. Now, assuming if you didn't have access to any kind of light, the watch is going to last for five months on a full charge. If you have the power saving function on, then that time is increased to 23 months. Also, if you had no access to a radio tower, your timekeeping would be accurate to plus or minus 15 seconds a month. Going over the case material, we're looking at a resin exterior. I know that was one of the biggest questions or most asked questions was, is the case made out of titanium? And unfortunately it is not. The titanium classification only applies to the bracelet. Moving inwards, you can see that there is a bezel. This is a rotating bezel. It is just a friction bezel. However, I will say it's very tight and feels solid. Very similar to any other Protrek bezel if you've experienced other Protreks. We've got a mineral crystal here. And something that's really cool is there are two layers. So it's called a duplex LCD. Now what this allows for is a very clear display for your main time data. And then on top of that, you can use it for very crisp images of your compass data or barometer data. Going over the main display, starting off at the very top, you can see that there is the moon data or moon phase data. And then right next to that is your day of the week. Underneath, we see the barometric pressure and then also the tide data. But if you hit the adjust button, you can change that to display calendar data. And then underneath that is your main time. 
All the way at the very bottom is your battery charge level, indicating L, M, or H. As you can see on mine, it is charged at the high level. Going over the different modes, so the mode button is right here. We have the tide data, the record function, and this is for your altimeter, alarm, and we have five alarms that you can set. One, two, three, four, five, and then signal. Your stopwatch, this is a 24 hour stopwatch. A 60 minute timer. World time. And then this is your atomic timekeeping menu. So it's telling me that on June 14th, it received a atomic time at 1.05 in the morning. You can also manually receive time if for some reason you hadn't you know, automatically synced up with it. And then back to your main time screen. Now if you look at the right hand side of the case, you can see the three pushers and this is how you access the ABC functions. So at the very top you've got compass and then barometer and then altimeter. So we're gonna quickly discuss each of those functions. For the compass, we're gonna press the button up here. You can see there's a little animation and it's going to point, so wherever the 12 o'clock of your watch is pointed to, that is the bearing or direction that the watch is gonna tell you. So right now, because the 12 o'clock is pointing this way, it's saying that this direction is east. Now as you can see there are three lines across the main screen and this is just like the timeout indication so it's only going to give you a compass direction or compass bearing for around 20 seconds and then it will time out so to get another bearing you just hit the button again. Another nifty little feature here is you've got the bearing record functionality. So we're going to go ahead and take a bearing. And if I wanted to take a quick snapshot of 075 degrees, I would hit this adjust button. And then it's going to record that right there. So for whatever reason, if you just need a quick um, assist with, you know, remembering a bearing, um, that it's a great little feature for you to be able to use. There's also several different types of calibrations and offsets that you can apply. So for example, if your map, the map that you're using indicates that there is a magnetic declination, you can input that offset so that your compass is giving you the most accurate data. Now going over the barometer, so hitting that button right here. So as you can see, it's going to give you the current barometric pressure in HGs. And then also here is a visual chart or graph for you to see the trend. Now, if you notice there was a little line here and right now it's pointing to zero. This is a cool little nifty feature and this is your uh, barometric pressure change indication. So this is measured in hectopascals from plus 10 to minus 10. And basically it's telling you the change or the difference within the last two hours of barometric pressure. So right now it's telling me there is zero change, but you know, if it were five or 10 or negative five or negative 10, so if it was increasing or decreasing, it would point to that. So there's a lot of redundancy here. You're gonna be able to see the change via this indication. And then also on your visual graph, you're gonna be able to see if it is increasing or decreasing. And another thing, you can't see it now just because barometric pressure has been fairly stable, but right here in the center, if there is a sudden change, whether it's increase or decreasing in pressure, there will be a little icon telling you. So there's a lot of information here for you to plan your trips or, you know, to prepare for any upcoming bad weather. 
Now, last but not least, we're going to cover the altimeter. And here, it's exactly what it says it is. It's going to tell you what your altitude is. A cool little nifty feature is you can set a reference point and measure the difference between point A to point B. So if we hit adjust right here, hit that button once, it's going to take an altitude measurement. And then, as you can see right here, that's zero. So that's our reference point. So let's just say if we were to go from a point that is 400 feet and then we end up at a place that is 500 feet. This zero is going to change to 100, telling you that you've increased your altitude by 100 feet. So it's a great little tool that you can use when you are using a map and you're looking at the contour lines to um, identify where you are in relation to those contour lines. Also in the altimeter mode, this is how you would record things. So to record data, you would just hold the altimeter button. And then there you have it. Now you've recorded that information. So the timestamp and the altitude that you were at. And if we were to go to the record screen, you would see that information right there. So the time, the date, and the altitude. And you can see here one. So that means that this is the first recording we've made and you can make up to 14 different recordings. If you make more than 14 recordings, then any subsequent recording will erase the oldest record. And then to erase all of them, you would just hold the adjust button until you see this and then erased all the data and to wrap up the functions and features um, this whole package comes with 200 meters of water resistance so fantastic you're gonna be able to use this watch literally anywhere that a human will be comfortable going or even uncomfortable We're going to do the loom shot here in a second, but before we do, I just wanted to show this to you. So we've got the light button right here, and it's kind of cool, I've never seen this before, but you've got like braille markings. I mean, it's not braille obviously, but it's just there, so if you're in the dark and you're not sure which button um, the light button is, you know, so that way you're not inadvertently adjusting anything on the watch, you can use this as a reference point to indicate what the light button is. So I thought that was just really great attention to detail from ProTrek. But as you can see, we've got the electroluminescent backlight here. I really like this. This is, it's not really old school, but nowadays you see that soft white glow, which is fantastic. But I really like this classic Casio um, EL light. It, it's just, it puts a smile on my face and it's, it's just a great thing. And of course, if you hold the light button for, I want to say it's like three seconds, you can see that auto shows up. So now you've got the auto light. So it will detect your wrist turning and will turn on the backlight anytime you turn your wrist. For the display, there's really nothing I don't like here. Uh, all the information is crisp and clear. Contrast is 10 out of 10. You would think that this is a very cluttered face, but once you get used to it and once you practice using it and understanding where all the information is, you appreciate just how, um, I guess, intuitive everything is. They did a great job knowing what a hiker or an outdoor person would need to use or need to see immediately. And I think they did a great job with the dimensions that they have. And yeah, I mean, you can see for yourself, the colors are crisp and clear. And then that dual LCD or duplex LCD system that they use is fantastic. I really like that. For the bezel, I'm gonna say that it's okay, I can take it or leave it. I like the fact that it's there, so for somebody that needs to use it, it you know, it's better to have it than to not have it. I will say um, it is a little bit difficult to use, and I can imagine if you're wearing gloves, it wouldn't get any easier, but 
you know, it works and that's all I got to say about that. For the pushers or buttons, I think they did an excellent job here. I really like the fact that they utilized this six o'clock position to put two buttons. So that way you're able to support having the sensor take up this nine or 10 o'clock position right here. Um, as far as functionality and ease of use, they're very easy to press and they're protected enough to where they'll never accidentally get pushed by inadvertent wrist flexion. So great job overall. Bracelet is fantastic. It is titanium, so that attributes to the fantastic weight. Um, I will say that I don't like the coating that they used on this one. I don't even think there is a coating because these things are scratch magnets. Um, case in point, if you look at the clasp, let's see if I can show it here. I don't know if you can see that, but right there. And keep in mind, this is off of not very hard use. So, you know, I've taken it out, worked out, um, done a lot of yard work with this watch, and I honestly don't think that any of those activities would warrant some scratches like this. So it obviously came from probably me sitting at the desk, and I don't know, that's just a bummer for me. I feel like, you know, it's not a big deal, obviously. It doesn't affect the functionality at all whatsoever. Um, but scratches on a bracelet or scratches anywhere in a watch just kind of drive me crazy. <laughs> but I'm sure most of you don't really care. Um, as far as um, ease of adjusting and everything, it's the pin and collar system. So not ideal, but as long as you know how to adjust a pin and collar bracelet, then it is very easy. Um, at the clasp, you can see the ProTrek logo. and. Um, all in all, you know, I like it. It is a great bracelet. I just wish that it had a better protective coating. You've also got three micro adjust settings here. So um, you can get a very decent fit on the wrist here. Here's a look at the case back. Very standard, nothing crazy here. Exactly what you would expect. Um, and you can also see the wings right here. I like to call them the shock absorbent flappy flaps and very comfortable. For the finishing, there's really not much to talk about just because you've got the resin case. Um, I will say aesthetically, the color scheme that they went with here is fantastic. I really like the um, sensible kind of gray titanium color that they have on the case and then on the screen you've got some variety there so overall I think what you're getting is something that's fun to look at but it's also very professional looking um, I will say I'm very disappointed with the the bracelet just because of how easy it is to scratch but again that's expected when you're looking at untreated titanium um, but all in all I'm pleased with how it looks for my personal thoughts, uh, number one, I really like it. There are some things that I don't like about it, but all in all, I'm going to um, fall more towards being a fan of the watch. Uh, my number one thought about it is that this is the closest thing to a smart watch that you're going to get to with a quartz engine. I mentioned it before, but everything about this watch is very intuitive and user friendly. I think for some people that aren't familiar with Protrex or watches in general might have a learning curve that they have to kind of work through, but the user manual does a great job explaining everything. And for the more watch savvy, you know, you mess around with the buttons, everything is clearly labeled, clearly displayed, and it's easy enough to work your way through it. Having the solar charging and atomic timekeeping really makes this a set it and forget it watch, which is ultimately the best kind of watch to have, especially if you're someone more focused on practical use than just collecting. My biggest gripe or complaint about the watch, and it's purely subjective, is the fact that the case is made out of resin. And I understand that they did that for price, to keep the price low, 
you're also increasing the overall durability and shock resistance and also you're reducing the weight so that's fantastic these are all great things but for me personally if you're going to call the watch a titanium watch when you have T in the model number and I'm pretty sure that stands for titanium I could be wrong let me know um, but if you're gonna have that as a main feature in the model number it's it's almost deceitful to have the case made out of resin and again that's just my opinion but um, for somebody that doesn't know what they're walking into and they are buying this watch for the purpose of a titanium case you know I can imagine being very disappointed finding out that it's made out of resin but other than my main complaint my final thoughts are you've got a great value watch I think for the price that you're paying um, you're getting so many features and everything is very easy very well done and also it's just a badass looking watch so what more can you ask for so anyways that's all i gotta say i hope you enjoyed this review and i hope that it helps you with your next watch purchase thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys on my next episode all right bye